As the title says, here's the Trophy Guide Road Map for Valkyria Chronicles. First, I'm going to show you how to unlock hidden potentials. Um, this is the easiest way to do it, but one thing for sure is you there's a point system. Um, in the description of the video, I'll have a link to several things. Um, um, as I said before, guides and stuff. But this will basically show you how it's done. You see me going, basically going through here. Like you go, you go to the command room. She'll say something when someone's new. Um, basically, you have new recruits. You select it, and she will tell you. And I had already selected her. You just move them in between. So you can move about easily. And you see me going to skirmish. This is the one you want to do. Just do a normal. It's easy as hell. Even with new. On a first playthrough. To get the A. To do and get the A rank at the same time. It's very. The video would show it perfectly. What you need to do. To unlock hidden potentials. And why it shows I'll go on. Basically I recommend saving everything for your second playthrough. It's especially the A ranks. Much easier to do because your characters will be higher level. Um, but if you're going to do on the first playthrough. After every mission. Not including skirmishes or reports. Level up all your classes so before you start um chapter three which is when you first gain the ability before do chapter three mission you want to be level four everyone rinse and repeat some mission chapters have two missions so like you want to do it that way um and chapter 8a you want your this is the only exception you want your scouts to be level 11 because they're going to make it much easier because they have their grenade launchers um and i recommend after 8b also to um un get everyone else to level 11. i'll explain it real quick basically um, every deployment equals one point towards unlocking their hidden potential. And you, you, I'm showing you here that I don't have it unlocked. Um, and so it's top two rows. And basically, various actions net you points. You see me picking her up. That'll take me to the five points I need. Um, but it's... Um, like, if I did another revive, I wouldn't get any more points from it. Like, kills are two points. So, if a character gets a kill, it doesn't matter how many kills, it's only two points. I wanted, waited for that. But as I was saying about the, oh, for, and this would show you how to get easy money early on. I'll just let this go through. Um, I would do that. Um, like, Getting rank A on the skirmishes aren't bad, but like the story missions and reports, I recommend second playthrough because you could do repeats. It would take two full playthroughs to get the plat. Um, because if you're doing it all on your first, getting at some, doing nothing but ever you can on your first playthrough, You're going to be making a lot of saves and reloading because you need everything to go off perfectly. Right there you just saw the grenade launcher. Basically by chapter 9, you want all your classes to be level 11 or higher. I recommend trying to keep them all together. It does, it works out real well. It's basically 
Do you want it as soon as possible or do you want to take your time? It's like speed versus easy. That's the main thing. Um, throughout the rest of it, you're going to see various things. Um, basically, all you truly need is like two or three to get the max amount of CP and stuff, like um, DCT, which is the money and XP. You need three CP even when you first unlock it. That's how easy this mission is. Because I showed you who to kill to get it. It's like the leaders and stuff. You always want to try and maximize your DCT. There are plenty of reasons behind it. Um, I'll let this one play out so you can basically see how it's going to work out. Here you see the score screen and you'll see that it's working out real well. You see two enemy leaders. That's everyone. You also want to try and get all the aces. Like doing everything first playthrough is you don't have the proper equipment. Which I recommend using the Galleon equipment over the Empire. Mainly because Empire tends to be short range, terrible accuracy for high damage. When you look at what the Galleon weapons do, it's long range, good accuracy, but not as good uh, damage. Here you see um, Elaine, Irene, who I'm visiting. This is basically what you have to do to get her. And you'll notice, I went past that, but you, um, she mentioned that she was going to you wanted to talk to the rising star of the squad you want that and here you'll see that I unlocked it that's basically how you do it this is going to be the war cemetery where you find the old man to buy orders you'll see how it is and like with the previous one I forgot to mention she'll be at castle front street this is basically how you're going to be getting majority of your orders the other way is by ranking up your classes um, I believe one you have to get on your second playthrough of the orders um, but, like, there's one character you have to unlock on second playthrough. There's a hidden character for each class that you have to unlock, too. And there will be links to how to do that along with other things. I'll put it in the description. This is basically how you do this one. And the next section is going to be for a few trophies that require you to unlock several things like metals and weapons because some can only be done this way besides aces um, there's going to be a little card you're going to see momentary after the ace weapon shows up there will be two of you always see that that would say either you have a metal or a weapon or a weapons or both you need Cordelia for this which you unlock after you complete the chapter 9 mission so it's going to be a while Anyway, um, this will show you basically how, like, where to go, how to get them, basically the process. Rank A, and you can only get um, the Royal Weapons through certain story, the campaign missions. And they're all chapter 10 and to the very end. Only those ones. Nothing before. There are, what's it, three or four tiers of royal weapons for each. Yeah, there's four tiers. And these are, generally speaking, especially the top tier ones, the best weapons in the game. There you see the medal. This is how you get the actual trophies. The trophies won't pop until you get these actual medals. So... But I recommend, as I've said, 
uh, if I haven't said it already, use the Galleon weapons. Accuracy, I feel it's more important than overall damage. Especially, and even if, like, the Imperial and Galleon weapons have similar accuracy, go Galleon. Their range is much more important. Um, their very few of the Imperial weapons are better. Most of the ones that are truly good are all DLC. Now, I still haven't confirmed whether or not you need to do like the extra hard missions for the um, trophy or not. Like there, you see, like I'm getting the stuff here. You saw the royal weapons. But I'll add stuff once I find it. But it's just I would show guides for that stuff later on. So it wouldn't be real bad. You would see it real easy. Like I'll link God. Now you're going to be seeing here how to um like if you don't like the roll of your royal weapons, you'll basically see how to get it here but you're going to need to make a save within the actual book to get them so um and you're going to be if you don't get the ones you i i've already made the save um already um so you didn't see it this is a different point actually earlier from the previous clip so you'll notice that like I don't immediately like this you'll see that I didn't immediately really like this roll so I did a re-roll and rinse and repeat this is basically how you're going to do it now as I was saying before this I'm like the DLC stuff I'm not sure counts towards like the DLC missions and those I don't absolutely know if they are required but I will be putting in links anyway even if they aren't for completionists um, I'm basically doing playlists and stuff like that um, and stuff um, the only one you have to be careful with finding the video for because not everyone labels it correctly is one for behind the blue flame because um, it's technically four missions and after the first mission it splits off into two and um, they have differing names. What determines whether or not you get it is certain actions beforehand in the mission before. As you see I'm just doing re-rolls here because I'm not liking and you'll see like in a bit I'll make a manual save because like all right, this was a decent roll, but I would like to try and get something better. Um, depending on your rank would dictate how many you get, like what are your chances of how many types, um, and like how many overall weapons you get. Um, a rank you generally get four or five weapons so um, like that's one thing so you'll be able to and that's if you get an A rank now generally you're going to get three weapon types if you're lucky you can get all four but that's kind of but you can just get two weapon types I've had it happen but um Beyond that, I want to go into like what a good squad w w setup would be. Gen and this isn't including Largo, Rosie, or Alicia. Now, um, these guys don't. Um, one thing you want to avoid are bad um, attributes, talents. Like, certain characters you would like to take, like Jane Turner, who's a shock trooper, good. Um, but, like, a bad attribute, for example, for those wondering, is pollen allergy, desert allergy. Those have negative effects. 
try and avoid characters with those. But certain ones are worth it. Jane Turner has very few. The only character I would say is an absolute must-have because when they are fully level to level 20, they are so OP'd that everyone else in their class has a hard time competing with them. And this is Marina Wolfstein. She's a sniper. She's a must-have because her accuracy... She has the absolute highest accuracy. And, like, once you hit a certain point, she gets ultimate accuracy. Um, which is unlocked through leveling up. And this bank... It basically makes it impossible to miss. And it procs every time. Any of the ultimate... Um, potentials like ultimate um, what is it tank damage or tank killer well I forget but another one like ultimate evasion they always proc they are guarantees so they are good but going in so like you want stuff like that like Ika Thompson for scouts um Nadine for engineers. Um, Jan, which is J A N N. It could, depending on how you read it, it could be pronounced Jan, but I prefer Jan. Um, for, or even Audrey for like the Lancers. I've already given you one for the. Um, Shock Troopers. And so you want that. But uh, like a good rollout would be this. Um, you want to recruit four scouts and four shock troopers. Because they have the numbers. They're going to be the ones you move most and deploy the most. You're rarely going to be deploying to anyone else because they're situational. Um, now... You want three Lancers. You don't need anything more than that because most missions don't even require, not including Largo, you to deploy, at most you would only need to deploy one other and that's pushing it. Like, the, there's only one, which is, was chapter seven or six. It's at the Barrios Ruins where you have to defeat a tank. That one basically requires you to almost deploy three or four Lancers every time if you want to do real well on it. And there are a few later missions that require multiple, but never anything more than four. I haven't seen a single guy that tells you to do that. Um, so you don't need to recruit any more than those three while having Largo. Engineers, you want four. You don't need more than that. And like snipers, two. Always bring Marina or when you have her. She is a must-have. As you see, I'm just farting around here. But this is your basic overall strategy. So, and like, if you do um, go for nothing but A ranks on your first playthrough, you will be able to buy all the research projects, which is something isn't real hard to do. Um, it's, you could possibly, I mean, you're not likely to get all, the, it's just like, due to like, there are, it's just, you're not, since you're not going to get every, the platinum or all the medals on the first playthrough anyway, it's easier to wait for the second. Because um, you can also, like, as I've said, reselect the campaign missions and reports. And these are good. I mean, basically beyond this, there isn't much to do. 
but I will be making those links so don't worry um, but it will take um, time like if you truly want to practice this, this isn't a game you're going to plat real fast some of it is challenging some of it isn't and basically I will tell you already right, this is the link is for this like, due to there are a bunch for, like, rank A's, I will put them all together under one section. So, th there's that. But, as I've said with the Behind Blue Flames, you're going to have to possibly fiddle around and find which one is you need for it. Alright? So, that's the only one I can't... I'll try and find the two video two videos for each mission so you'll be able to easily do it but um, beyond that I'm going to stop here um, with this finish off and this is the just the basic way to do it the best way as I've said there are characters you have to unlock so do not if you want an easy plot don't bother this isn't easy it's time consuming and when you are truly going for it if you aren't going to be doing saving and reloading constantly this is going to take a lot longer and more luck base because of how the game plays so I'll end here and talk to you guys um, later and I will be uploading another video um, to, to discuss um, Friday stream Friday and Saturday and a something I would like to try on streaming but beyond that, this is the end of the video. I just with this section play out. If I